Hi everyone, um, I'm Nisha and this will be my third interview. Okay, um, let me just talk about how did I get involved in my work now okay, and how did I be an activist for my community. <clears throat> okay, um, the first thing how I got involved is because of my past. Um, when I was 21 years old, which I already started to transform as a transgender woman, it was my bad luck day. Okay, um, I was caught by the religious people. Okay, uh, in Malaysia we have two kind of offices. One is uh, the police officers which deals with the civil law and the other one is the religious officers which deal with the Sharia law. Okay? So um, um, it happened to me at, at that time I was actually I was working as a receptionist in a hotel. It's not a five star hotel, it's just it's just budget three-star, two-star hotel, okay, uh, it was back in my hometown, like, uh, and um, at that time when I was caught, I was, I was with my friends, okay, and we were hanging out together, just having fun, so, um, I would, uh, then the religious people, they came approach us, and they told us that, uh, okay, you, this is against the law, you have to bring to court this and that, so they caught us. And at that time, I, I thought that, you know, they, if I were to plead guilty, it was just going to be like a counselling session thing, you know, they're just going to try to, you know, give us some talk or something. But again, uh, at, the, at the court, the Shire court, I was told by one of this person, Okay, from the religious department that you know, just plead guilty and things will go smooth and I, and, and I said okay fine but I plead guilty because at that time I was young and I didn't know about rights this and that so I plead guilty and guess what when I plead guilty I was sentenced to jail yeah so I was charged under under the the uh, Sharia law which is for cross-dressing and I was put in jail. Uh, I was sentenced to two months in prison, and things just changed. You know, after being in a prison, in the prison itself, it just changes me. Um, let me tell you a bit what happened to me in the prison. Okay, um, when I was when I was in the prison, the first day itself, um, I could feel. Trans, that, that, that hate kind of feeling towards people like me because the words, the words that they use in there for people like us is really, 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 really bad, you know, and I, I remember, you know, I was calling one of these officers and I, I call him Abang, Abang means brother, okay, I was calling um, brother, could you and before I could finish my word, he was shouting from the corner and saying, "Don't call me brother. I don't have a, I don't have a family member like you. You know this and that." And it, it really gave me a shock. And, and I, I didn't I didn't say anything, but I just kept quiet. You know. And then um, they they ball my hair. And at that time I had I had longer hair than this. Very long, and they ball my hair, and I just can just just keep quiet. I didn't say anything because I was so afraid. And yeah, after balding my hair, then they had to do medical exam, and at that time I already did my breast breast implant, and it was it was a talk about at that time because. Saying, they were like saying, you're 
making fun of it, you know, how big is it? Uh, you're asking me some silly questions, whether I feel anything, they would touch my breasts or this and that, but I just didn't say anything, but I just, I was just a shock, you know, I, I didn't say anything. And after I finish that show with the officers in there, I was asked, because you know, for the transgender, we were put in a, in a cell where it's right at the end of the other cells. So we have to we have to walk past by the other cells. And what happened was, um, I was asked to stop in one. I think it was four cell, four block cells that I had to pass through. And I, in each cells, I had to stop and I had to take out my shirt and show my breast to the other inmates. And it was scary. It was scary because the inmates there, they were shouting as if they haven't seen breasts before, you know, and I didn't do anything. Again, it was something that I didn't expect it. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that this was happening to me. I was doing it. My tears was watering. I mean, sorry, my, my eyes, my eyes was in tears. And and God, he just ignored me. He just he just ignored me. He as if I don't have feelings. So after all the prayer in front of everyone was in my cell and I thought I was safe but again I'm not because in the cell itself you have other male inmates and I was told by I met a senior transsexual there you know, she was caught in another case so she told me Nisha you better find someone to protect me and I didn't understand what she meant by that to protect me because I thought the God will protect me there but <laughs> the truth is if you are transsexual and if you are in a male cell, <laughs> you are just like a supper, you know, a supper for the other inmates. So I have to find someone to protect me and the person that I found was another choice. I, I didn't do it because I wanted to do it because if I didn't do it then I have to I have to satisfy this other group of inmates which I don't think is a good idea. Uh, day by day day passes by every night Seriously, I was, I was like thinking, what did I do that I deserve all this? So, after after two months passes by, I came out and I remember the time I was I was given a call to, to my mom because we, we have to inform my, our mom, you know, um, my mom that you know what time I'm coming out, isn't it? So, she asked me what do I want and the first thing that I told her was, please mom, please go to my take some money and buy me a wig. Guess what? I was so surprised because before this my mom didn't really um, approve of me being a transgender but after seeing me going through all this she got me, she got me a wig. <laughs> but after coming out from prison I wasn't the old person anymore because I didn't want to mix with anyone. I was so angry with the society out there. At that time I got involved in 
nightlife, you know, I was working as a GRO, you know, serving men, this and that. And at the same time, I was trying to get back to my normal routine, my normal life. And that's where I was like, you know, Googling, I was trying to find who and who that can help me to solve my problem, that can fight for my rights. And I found PT Foundation. So that was my first start actually, founding that only organization in Malaysia that deals with transgender issues. So I went I went for the session and then seriously Sulastri is one of my idol, you know. I look up on her very much and she gave me that courage. You know, I look at her and I say, I'm gonna be like her. And that's how I get involved in, in, in activism and for me now I just don't want my community to face what I face now. You know, I, I want to fight for all transgender rights, regardless of any race, religion or whatever. Because for me, you can be transgender, you can be a woman, you can be a guy, you can be gay, whatever. But we are all human beings and we have equal rights. So that is something that I always base on that. and I always tell the people. Whatever it is, okay, we are all human beings and we deserve to be treated equally. So, yeah, that's how I got involved in activism and involved in PT Foundation where I'm, I'm now the program manager for the transgender program. And even though um, in PT Foundation we are, we are only based on HIV, Prevention, but then for me, if you want to work about, if you want to talk about HIV issues, health issues, we have to deal with the society, we have to deal with the community, and it involves the basic right of being a transgender, which is human rights. So, yeah, that's that's part of my story and how I got involved first in being where where I am now. So, see you guys again. Bye.